Education Minister Krishna Gopal Shrestha has been drawn into the limelight for all the wrong reasons following his involvement in releasing an individual who had been arrested for allegedly discriminating a caste. Meanwhile, his resignation has been demanded from all quarters for his misuse of power and position on such a sensitive issue. Good morning, I'm Abhide Shrestha and these are the headlines of the hour. Chairman K.P. Sharma Oli's unilateral decisions push CPN UML towards chaos. The Madhav Kumar Nepal faction not to attend today's Central Committee meeting. Questions raised on the President's role at yesterday's meeting of the National Assembly. Lawmakers claim the Prime Minister's recent actions have lowered the dignity of the President. A wildfire burns 90% of the village that recorded Canada's highest ever temperature. 230 deaths due to the heat wave recorded in Canada so far. And Roger Federer and Daniel Medvedev advance into the third round of Wimbledon tennis. Top women seed Ashley Barty and Coco Guff also reach the third round. The CPN UML, which was previously known to be an effectively managed party, has been divided due to Chairman K.P. Sharma Oli's unilateral ways. The CPN UML on Wednesday dismissed the decision made by the organizing committee of the 10th General Convention as the Supreme Court raised questions regarding it. Meanwhile, the committee meeting nominated two leaders each from the leadership and the disgruntled factions, including four leaders from the CPN Maoist Center. The Madhav Kumar Nepal faction of CPN UML has remained unsatisfied as standing committee members were added from the dismissed structure of the party. Premier Oli, while forming the organizing committee, had not fulfilled party procedures while he tried to justify his controversial steps when dismissing the structure. Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli had proposed a six-point agreement for party unity following his weak grounds after dissolving the House of Representatives for the second time. Even while doing so, Premier Oli had not tried to hold dialogue or consent with the other faction. Prime Minister Oli's plans went in vain as the disgruntled faction rejected the plan, stating that the plan had been brought about prioritizing his interest. Prime Minister Oli had ousted 11 party members of the Nepal faction from the party on 24th of May and asked for clarifications from 12 members of the same faction. However, following the dismissal of the organizing committee of the General Convention, the action has also been ineffective. Premier Oli had suspended four influential leaders, including Madhav Kumar Nepal, for six months, accusing them of forming a parallel committee in the party, which Oli himself dismissed to secure his prime ministerial position. Oli announced the organizing committee of the General Convention on 12th of March earlier this year, dismissing the Central Committee and Standing Committee. However, later formed a Standing Committee, excluding members of the Nepal faction on 24th of April. On 12th of March itself, Oli retrieved, relieved leaders from the disgruntled faction and handed over their responsibilities to the leaders of his faction without the presence of majority of the members of his faction. Premier Oli has been appointing and removing members of the party and government officials at his will. This has resulted in the split in CPN UML, which was previously considered as the most organized party. Meanwhile, the Nepal faction has decided not to attend today's Central Committee meeting of the party, called by Chairman Oli. The decision was taken by the meeting of the Standing Committee members of the Nepal faction yesterday, citing that they would not attend the meeting called by the Unconstitutional Organizing Committee of the 10th General Convention. At the 8th session of the National Assembly that started from yesterday, leaders of the opposition parties accused Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli of not trusting the people-elected institution and dissolving the House of Representatives time and again, disrespecting democracy and the Constitution. At the first meeting of the 8th session of the National Assembly held yesterday, main opposition Nepali Congress leader Radhe Shyam Adhikari stated that the government has not been responsible to the parliament and the recent controversial moves made by Prime Minister Oli has even affected the dignity of the president. Likewise, National Assembly member representing CPN Maoist Center, Dina Nath Sharma, accused Prime Minister Oli of trying to end Nepal's leftist movement. Leader Sharma accused Premier Oli of dissolving the lower house twice against the norms and values of democracy and the constitution. 
Meanwhile, National Assembly member of the ruling CPNUML, Suman Raz Pyakurel, spoke in support of the government, saying that the judiciary cannot be a place to resolve political tussles. Amid protests from lawmakers at the National Assembly, 16 ordinances, including the ordinance on the Constitutional Council, were presented yesterday. Education Minister Krishna Gopal Shrestha has been facing criticism from all quarters following his involvement in releasing an individual who had been arrested for allegedly discriminating a caste. Although Minister Shrestha has accepted his wrongdoing, Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli and his party have not taken any action against him. After Education Minister Shrestha went to a police station in his official car to release a landlady who was arrested for allegedly rejecting to rent a room to a person based on caste, he was criticized from all quarters. The National Human Rights Commission summoned Education Minister Shrestha to its office for clarification on Wednesday following the incident and warned him not to repeat such activities. In his response, Minister Shrestha said that he had realized his mistakes and assured that such activities would not repeat in future. The National Dalit Commission on 24th of June had termed the minister's action as misuse of public position and a very disheartening approach. Both the commissions have requested to have a fair investigation into the case and to stop the safeguarding culprits involved in such sensitive issues. A minister who has accepted his mistake has been handed the responsibility of five ministries by the Prime Minister. Other government bodies have failed to take action against him as the Prime Minister himself has been defending him. Both the commissions have termed the protection of the guilty party by the minister as unethical. A leader of the CPNUML even demanded for the minister's resignation at a party meeting. Leaders apart from Dalits not opposing the minister's discriminatory action is surprising. The Constitution and, law, and the law of our country has recognized caste-based discrimination as a crime, while the protection of culprits by higher-level government officials as misconduct. Shrestha, who has been involved in this incident, however, has not shown any inclination towards assisting in the investigation process. The party and the premier, meanwhile, have failed to take action against the minister, who has been found to be involved in promoting discrimination against the Dalit community. 33 more individuals succumbed to COVID-19 yesterday, taking the country's death tally to 9,145, while the death rate stands at around 1.5%. Meanwhile, the total number of COVID-19 cases in the country has crossed 640,000 as 1,857 more individuals tested positive for the virus yesterday. According to the Health Ministry, 7,130 tests through the PCR method were carried out and the infection rate now stands at 4.9%. Meanwhile, 4,017 individuals registered full recovery, taking the recovery tally to over 600,000, while the recovery rate stands at 93.7%. Based on the Health Ministry's report, currently there are 31,368 active cases, out of which 28,374 are in home isolation, 629 in intensive care units, and 181 on ventilator support. In our public voice segment, we had asked the local residents in Dhanusha what should be done to prevent deforestation. Let's take a look at what they had to say. And it's time now for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. And here's the question, what is the main reason behind major development projects being drawn into controversy before even starting? Your options are A, lack of adequate study, B, political interest, and C, fight for rights. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And that's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.